another situation. Uh, we again have our mass on the 37 degree incline. Uh, same situation we just looked at, except that now we have an applied force in the horizontal direction <coughs> that's applied in the direction that tends to oppose motion down the incline, so it's going to have to be applied in this direction. And it has a magnitude that's one-fourth the weight, which means weight being mg, one-fourth of the mg, and that's in the negative i direction. Okay. So we have this force in addition to the others. So now what does our force diagram look like? It looks just like it did before, except that now we have this applied force. So this is just what we had before, but now uh, in purple here we have represented our applied force. Now what do we notice about this? Uh, well, one obvious thing is all of our vectors are expressed by their components parallel to one of the axis, one or the other of the axes, except for this applied force. So we're going to want to do that with the applied force. Now we know that uh, when this thing rotates down, well, we know that 37 degrees is the angle between the incline and horizontal, so a horizontal force is going to have to be at 37 degrees relative to the direction of the incline. Okay? Uh, so that means this angle here is going to be 37 degrees, so that this angle here is 217 degrees. I didn't write, well actually I guess I kind of, no I don't think I wrote that down. I mean I represented it here, but I don't think I wrote down the reasoning. Uh, you know, from here to here is 90, 180, and then another 37 gives us 217. So the applied force in the x direction is going to be 1 quarter mg times the cosine of 217 degrees times I. and cosine 270 degrees being negative 0.8, we get negative 0.2 mg times i. One quarter of 0.8 is 0.2, okay? Uh, or one-fifth if you wish. Um, one quarter of four-fifths. Any way you want to look at that. And then the y component of our applied force is same thing but with the sine of 217 degrees, and that's negative 0.16 mg times, of course, the j vector. So now we have the uh, y component of the applied force here, the x component of the applied force here, and we can proceed to just list our forces in the x and the y directions. Okay, so as before, we have 0.6 mgi um, and negative 0.8 mgj. I don't know why. Had a hard time finding that. They not, not that much there, just getting light. Okay, negative point eight mg times j. Uh, these are the components of the gravitational force, and really I should have listed those right across from one another because <coughs> we want to keep track of what we have. So I'm going to kind of do that. Now that leaves me the problem that I don't have a good place to put the normal force in. Um, and there is no frictional force. And I'm going to put the normal force times J here. Okay? Now, then I have my negative 0.2 mgi, negative 0.16 mgj. So what I'm listing is the components of the mg force, the weight force, and the applied force. Um, bad form, I should label them on both sides. But So here I have the applied force. And then here I have the normal force, and there's no frictional force to list. I wrote that in there. I'm going to kind of remove that now. I wanted to explicitly reflect the fact that there's no frictional force in this case, but that is part of the... And since I drew a frictional force in here, I, I kind of needed to do that. I should maybe erase that frictional force out, but I'm not going to. 
Okay, anyhow, I add the X forces together, I get 0.4 mg times I. And then over here, uh, if I add the negative 0.8 and negative 0.16, I get negative 0.96, not negative 0.64. Um, so that should be negative 0.96 mg. And I see that the normal force is 0.96 mg times j. Now remember in the previous it was just 0.8 mg times j, but now friction, the, the normal force is greater because this applied force has a component that's also pushing the object into the incline, so the incline has a greater reaction. And of course, formally, the normal force has to balance both this and this. Okay, actually, we'll look here. The normal force here has to balance this and this. Okay, since there's no frictional force, we get net force of 0.4 mg times I, and acceleration divided by m, you get 0.4 g in the I direction, which would be about 4 meters per second squared in the I direction. Now, if you introduce friction, if we had the same coefficient of friction as before, um, and I don't know what 0.28 is doing there, um, yeah, I do. Okay, and of course it's wrong. Uh, the frictional force, if we had a coefficient of 0.2, or 20% of the normal force, well, 20% of this is, what, 19.2 newtons, okay? Or 19.2 mg in this case. got that arrow there. That's important. Think about why. Okay, so now we have a 19.2 mg multiplied by negative i, and that has to be added to our x forces, and that's going to leave us what? 20.8 mg times i. Um, I don't know how I got what I had before, but I'm pretty sure this is Twenty point eight mg times I. The idea simply is, if you got friction, you got to multiply that by the normal force, and then take that into account over here. If there was a 0.2 coefficient of friction, or twenty percent of the normal force, frictional force, uh, then the frictional force would be twenty percent of that ninety point nine six mg, nineteen point two mg, times the negative I, and if you add that to the 0.4 mg times I, you get twenty point eight point not 20.8, it's 0 0.208 mg times I. I had something else there. I've erased it. I have no idea how that occurred. But I'm pretty sure it was an error. So you can look back at it and see. Uh, anyhow, it's 0 0.208 mg times I. And this should be 0.192, not 19.2. You have to do 20% of 96, and I forgot to fix the decimal place. Okay, hopefully that's clear. This is very important. Uh, I always found this uh, at first when I encountered this, and I think I've seen a pattern where many students do. Uh, a horizontal force in here gets kind of confusing. And if the force is at some other direction that's not parallel to the incline or normal to the plane, it gets even more confusing, so you want to follow this kind of step-by-step -step procedure, making sure you've drawn every force, calculated every force, represented every force. Then you sum it, and uh, you take what you get.